there are some talented photographers out there on YouTube. Here's my top five for you to tune into in 2024. Hello everybody, you're very welcome back to the channel and it's that time of year again where I get to pick five landscape photographers who are also on YouTube who I think you should subscribe to in the following year. It's something I've been doing now for the last number of years, five or six, I'm not quite sure, but I really love doing it because it gives me an opportunity to showcase some of the talent that's out there to you guys and see if they can get more people to watch. So without any further ado, here's my top five landscape photographers to watch in 2024. Let's go. First up is the photographer whom I've had the pleasure of first meeting virtually back in 2020 in Clubhouse. And since then, I've watched in awe as he has produced some incredible images and videos. I also had him as a guest on the Irish Photography Podcast. And his story was not only fascinating, but also inspiring. Now, since then, he's continued to inspire with his incredible video content on YouTube. Kenny's talent is not just limited to taking amazing photos, He's an accomplished workshop leader, and get this, he writes a poem to go with each of his incredible images. Plus, he shares his journey with his incredible rescue dog, Sabu, and lives full-time in his Airstream. He has just really started now to create content for his YouTube channel, so jump on over, subscribe, and enjoy the stunning visuals that he creates. I'm looking forward to seeing what amazing content he comes up with in 2024. And first and foremost, well, let me give you a a little view in here let me widen the frame here this is my airstream and this is the bag this is this is what we're gonna be gonna be looking at today first thing i noticed was the material the nylon it's really really tough and durable it's waterproof i haven't had anything go into the bag that shouldn't be in there uh, the zippers are all high quality even even the fabric that's woven onto the zippers that's just my baby doll. See you guys later. Bye. Next up is someone who I had the pleasure of spending time with when he visited Ireland back in October this year. Rick Bevington is a photographer and videographer who has not only been working very hard and closely with Nigel Danson, filming and editing the highly renowned Luskintyre series, but is also creating some excellent content for his own YouTube channel. He has released some very thought-provoking videos about camera gear and how important it is or needs to be in your creative process. Rick has a great approach to his craft and I'm sure you will also enjoy following along on his journey as he continues to traverse the landscape either on his own or filming videos for Nigel's channel. Jump on over, subscribe to his excellent content, I promise it will be game changing. In order to make using an everyday camera as easy and as effortless as possible, we need to remove any friction between the idea of us going out and taking photos and that actually happening. We need to remove the choice. It's a bit like if you want to go for a run, the best thing to do is lay out your kit and put your running shoes by the door for the morning. So when you get up in the morning, you don't have to make that choice. I'm talking about things like choice of lenses, choice of whether or not to take filters, sometimes even the choice of which camera to even bring. Now this next photographer is someone whom I enjoy watching whenever he releases a video due to his positive approach, infectious energy, and of course, great shots. It also helps that he's Irish and is now living in Portugal, so he has some excellent seascapes at his doorstep. Neil spends his days working with international known Brendan Van Son as a coffee roaster and barista in the studio coffee shop. However, when he puts down his coffee tools and picks up his camera is when we really get to see his bubbly personality shine through. Neil's excitement in the landscape is great and his homemade ASMR studio, also known as a towel, allows him to add his dulcet Irish tones as voiceovers to his excellent images. If you want to see some of the stunning areas of Portugal from an Irishman's point of view, and of course, get to see him being soaked by the incoming waves quite often, then I'm sure you will enjoy Neil's channel. So jump on over, smash that subscribe button and ask him, Kona Sothatu. Well, hello there folks, and how is it going? And welcome back to another video. We are at this, look at this madness that's about to happen here behind us. It is absolutely insane here. 
there's a storm off out somewhere over the Atlantic and it is kicking up these colossal waves. So we are here to take advantage of that and photograph these waves as they absolutely batter this coast. So let's get to shooting and hope, uh, hope I don't get dragged away in the process. My next photographer is someone whose work I've admired from afar for a very long time and who has also made a name for herself through her unique style of photography. Sarah Lindsay is a photographer based in Canada who not only takes some stunning images of this incredible landscape but also adds her own touch by including herself in the images in her now infamous yellow dress. Her approach to her work is incredible and she takes us with her on many fantastic journeys. She also has her best friend Ali with her for many of these adventures, which is another great addition to her channel. Earlier this year she visited Ireland and of course fell in love with it. So much so, she wants to come back and share the stunning vistas and locations with her workshop participants. And I'm delighted to be co-hosting this with her in October 2024. I also had Sarah as a guest in my podcast and it was a conversation that not only did I enjoy a lot but one that resonated with my audience also. So head on over to Sarah's channel, subscribe, and I'm sure you will also enjoy her content and creative approach as much as many others do. Oh, okay, so it is finally shooting time, this spot that I am at. It's like tourist central here right now. Rightly so, it's Canadian Rockies. I really want this shot before fall takes over and obviously winter takes over, so... I came all the way out to Pedro Lake, which is about a two hour drive for me. And yeah, it's actually really, really beautiful. I am actually going to photograph this with my 70 to 200. I'm gonna explain why, I'll show you the camera, how it is set up. And then I'm gonna make the scary climb over to the rock and go sit on it. I already have the dress on, had to do that while there was no people here. I have like probably five minutes where I have it on my own. So fingers crossed nobody else comes. Otherwise you guys will hear them and then I'm just gonna look like an idiot in my yellow dress. But anyways, let me show you the scene. Let me explain to you why I'm using the 70 to 200, not the 16 to 35. And then it's time to get shooting. So there is, you can see it right there. That's the rock I'm going to be sitting on. And again, I have my 70 to 200 on. Let's look at what it looks like in the back of the camera so you guys can get an idea of what I'm doing here. So it's probably pretty dark on the back of the camera because that mountain over there just has so much shade. But here's what it looks like, the 70 to 200. I want to have the self-portrait compressed against those mountains rather than having it wide with all of like the other messy rocks in the frame. So I think that this will actually look really, really beautiful because it's dark here, which I do want, and then it transitions from like the dark into the light. So when I edit this, actually, I think it's gonna turn out really beautifully. That rock looks like it is pretty simple to get on, but it's actually not. It is quite the journey over there. Scary, because it's on a slant, but I'll make it work. So I just wanna show you guys the rock so you can get a better sense of how scary it is to walk up it. I thought about not doing it because I'm alone so if anything were to happen it would just be bad news because there's no surface there's no one up here so here it is that is the rock even just look oh my gosh even that just looks so beautiful I should have photographed it like this with the 16 to 35 that would be really pretty but that is the rock and you have to kind of like straddle and hang on to the edge there when you're walking up it is a little bit scary let me zoom in so you can see but at the top it's quite flat so it's pretty easy to sit on and then you gotta climb all the way back down through here and i did it barefoot good job Sam. last but by no means least is another guest that I've had the pleasure of having on my podcast and someone that since then I've spoken to quite a lot, mainly due to his attitude and approach to helping others to get the most out of their photographic journey. David Johnson is a photographer who breaks down photography into chunks that are not only understandable, but also highly relatable and useful. And he's also created the LPU, the Landscape Photography University, to help others grow and indeed flourish through the joy of photography. 
David's channel will give you a mix of educational, on location and back in the editing studio content and I'm sure that will also help you progress at a faster pace than you thought possible. He also has his own highly successful podcast where you can listen to and now watch his incredible interviews with some of the world's finest photographers of our generation. What if you could get perfectly exposed photos guaranteed just by changing one setting on your camera? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you where to find that, how to use it, and why it's so good. All that coming up. So first of all, in the simplest terms, exposure is just how bright or how dark a photo actually is. And when you understand that, you understand how to perfectly expose an image. But a lot of times you're caught changing around camera menus and settings on your dials and you're trying to figure out what exposure is the best. Now to understand exposure best, you must first understand the histogram, which is this graph right here. It's a representation in graph form of where the light is in the image. So on the far left, you have blacks, then you have your shadows, in the middle you have your midtones, then you have your highlights, and all the way to the right, you have your whites. Now there's no perfect histogram to have every single time because every scene is totally different. Your light's different and it's always changing. So I really hope you've enjoyed my five choices of landscape photographers on YouTube that I really recommend you should go and subscribe to. I hope you'll go over to their channel, smash the subscribe button and let them know that you came from here so at least they can feel the love. Thank you very much as always for watching this episode and for supporting my own channel. If it's your first time on my channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, schlong the forward.